Hey, what's up? Welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 2, Episode 26. We are back with our Trick or Trash Month for October. We're doing Mr. Boogity today from 1986, directed by Oz Scott. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor the Incompetent Ghost McGraw. Hi, I'm Matt Curione. How's it going? Welcome to the dumpster. Daddy, I keep hearing this sneezing. Believe me, there are no ghosts in this house. Gag City. <laughs> I'll get you for this, Carlton. Just kidding. Just kidding. Hey, on. Isn't that a little chancy? I mean, this is Halloween. Isn't that when all the creepy things are supposed to stock the earth? It deals with demons. Demon resurrection and those forces which roam the forest and dark bowers of man's domain. The first few pages warn that these enduring creatures may lie dormant, but are never truly dead. It's Halloween, gentlemen. Halloween! Have you forgotten? They're coming to get you, Barbara. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare. Trick or treat. Yeah, so Matt's back on the show today. Um, you know, one I, year to the day, my friend. I have no idea. Maybe <laughs> uh, last year. Last year he did American Werewolf in Paris with us, ringing in the Trick or Trash month. <laughs> Yikes! Started off strong. <laughs> thank, thank you for bringing c- coming back with a significantly better movie that runs at about half the runtime. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think we should do like this as as our uh, October tradition when we when we kick this off every year. Have Matt come on for the first episode. I totally agree. I like it. Yeah, and please keep bringing shit that I've either never seen or never heard of. Yeah, we're talking Mr. Boogity today. Yes. I didn't know a fucking thing about this movie until today. What was your childhood? <laughs> well, I, well, first of all, this came out the year I was born. It's a failed pilot, so really, it getting around to failed me was... pilot. What are you talking about? This was on the. <laughs> This was an episode of the Magical World of Disney. Like, this was like... It is it is listed on the internet as a failed pilot. For what? I, I don't know. Mr. Boogity the series? Maybe. What were they going to do? Keep keep defeating the same stupid ghost every week? Well, you know, you have Richard Mazur's going to open up that gag shop, and every week's a different fucking gag with a different ghost, man. Yeah, but then you know what happens? He fucking slits his wrists in a bathtub, and then that whole thing happens. Oh my happens. god, you know, I think I just figured it out. After, oh my god. After he slits his fucking him. wrists and writes it on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> He's the fucking ghost from Beetleborgs. That's the oh. house. Oh. <laughs> Whatever the fuck his name was, that Joker-looking fuck? The Jay Leno fucking Elvis-looking motherfucker? Yeah. You know, this, this whole movie is actually based on a deleted line of dialogue from John Carpenter's The Thing. When Wil- Wilford Brimley says, watch Clark... The next part of the sentence was, watch Clark, he's going to make a gag shop oh. in Lucifer Falls. Wilfred, man. Yes. Well, see, there he is. He's back again. Wilfred's coming in. I'm not an alien. I'm a uh, boogity boogity boo. Let me back in. What's with the noose there, Wilfred? Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm all better now. I definitely don't have a spaceship under here. <laughs> I'm not going to put my fingers into that man's face. I'm definitely not a ghost with a cape. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, so so this was made for, for Disney, the Disney Channel, right? Mm-hmm. As, as Matt was saying. Um, real quick, the writer is, is Michael Janover or, or Janover? It's probably Janover, right? Sure. Um, he, he wrote the screenplay for the Philadelphia Experiment, oh. and um, he originally pitched this film to Columbia as a horror spoof in the vein of Airplane, <laughs> and wanted Cheech and Chong to be the starring characters. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So Columbia, Columbia was like, uh, no, we're good. We're going to do Ghostbusters 2 instead. Well, okay, fair enough. So was he just like, so was he so married to this idea that he would just settle for a 45-minute version where they just stripped everything out of it? Yes. I guess. And, and then Disney Disney was like, that sounds great. Rewrite it all. Yeah. <laughs> cut, out, cut, cut, out, cut out half of this. O- okay. <laughs> cut out all of it. I will eviscerate my baby. Here we go. There's too much, there's too much boogity. Put him in about <laughs> six minutes. <laughs> this is a fucking family film. Uh, that has, like, when you really think about it, some really incredibly spooky uh, concepts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> just, just like, as window dressing. Yeah, haunted pilgrims and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you 
it's there if you want it. Like, there's a scene towards the end where I was like, wow, if this was like an, if this was Poltergeist or some shit, like, I might be a little scared, but it's just like goofy enough that even like the, let's say, scariest part, for lack of a better way to put it, uh, it's still just like bizarre and kooky. Uh, and it kind of, it works. It, it pretty much works. It pretty much works. There's a lot of awkward moments in this. A lot of dad jokes. Did anyone else get the feeling the dad was moving his family to this house so he could brutally murder them and then, cut, like, I don't know, bury them and forget about it or something? I got some weird vibes from this guy the whole time. But it's a gag. I mean, Derry does a lot of wacky shit to you, man. See, here's the thing. He sunk all his money into ga- Gags R Us or whatever the fuck this place <laughs> is. Gag City. Gag City. He sunk all his I've money seen into- this movie like <laughs> more times than I can count. <laughs> he sunk all his money into Gag City and then bought this fucking haunted house in New England and literally has no money left. And he's like, no, we're not moving. It's not haunted. We're staying here. No, we can't move. <laughs> no, you don't understand. We can't move. <laughs> yeah, we can't move because you'll be dead. <laughs> well, they say, uh, I mean, we're going to crunch this, I'm sure, in a minute, but he does make a... He makes a comment early in the film saying, you know what, it's going to be our first house. And my first thought is like, okay, so were you living in that fucking truck that you're pulling behind (laughs) you? Like, that fun house? That is exactly what I thought. I was like, our first house? Well, it beats living in a truck full of hand buzzers, Dad. (laughs) (laughs) Oops, I sat on a joy buzzer. (laughs) They're they're the best seller. Whoopee cushion again, Connor. (laughs) How about some fake Uh, vomit? (laughs) Thanks, Dad. Dude, this, this fucking daughter looked like she was at her wit's end with her fucking dad. These kids looked so stressed, and the parents are like, everything's fine, as their, as their head <laughs> twists sideways. We got a hell of a fucking lineup here, folks. Christy Swanson, Buffy the Vampire Slayer herself, is the daughter. Oh my god, I didn't even yeah. notice that. David Faustino. Who's the who's the, one of the um, is the middle child? He's Bud Bundy from yeah. Mar- Married with Children. Yeah, and Benji Gregory, the little boy, is the fucking main kid. Brian Tanner on Elf. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, Neil Witherspoon. Neil Witherspoon is John Aston, aka Gomez Adams. Oh my god! I was watching the movie. I was like, who? This guy looks so fucking familiar. Yeah, it's Gomez. Yeah, yeah. No, it bothered me to the point where I was like, I gotta know who the fuck this is because I he, like. Yeah, it's Gomez. It's Gomez if he was a hobo, which is why it was distracting. He just runs the historical society in <laughs> Lucifer Falls. It's fine. Listen, I, I've met some historical society people, and this kind of lines up. Yeah, they're weird. <laughs> they're weirdos. Uh, Do they have a store full of mannequins that they dress up? Of course. Um, I don't want to get into details, but uh, not far from it. George C. Scott was like, you know what? I don't want this haunted house. I'm going to take the yellow one with the kid in the wheelchair. (laughs) (laughs) I get that reference now. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, Benji Gregory, the little kid from ALF. How about him, huh? There's, that's why he's not in the sequel. Yeah. Because he was doing Alf. Oh, yeah, there's a sequel. Bride of, right? Mm-hmm. Bride of Boogity. It's way <laughs> better. I found out I found out about both of these movies in the past, like, week or two. And then, like, Matt was like, I texted Matt, like, an hour ago. He's like, yeah, I watched both today. I was like, what do you mean both? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's, there's two of these things? In Connor's head, he's like, it was a failed pilot. What do you mean there's two? Yeah, there's a yeah, sequel there's movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How do you how do you make a failed pilot twice? Just to round it out, we got Richard Masser, yes. who is uh, Stan from from the It, uh, the original It with Tim Curry, and he's the dad. He's also the dad in um, uh, License to Drive, and I think he's Dan Aykroyd's brother in My Girl. Yes. Isn't he also the the dad in Encino Man? Uh, He very well might be. I think so. I vaguely remember him in that. He's one of those guys that we talk about on the show sometimes. He's a that guy. Like, to a T. Yeah. Oh, he's totally a that guy. Rich Messer, he's great. Yeah, he's in, like, he's in Multiplicity and other stuff like that. What do I see here? Um, He's in stuff. Not the stuff. Let's, Let's not confuse the two. He's in the thing. He's in the thing. That's what matters. Oh, yeah, he's in the thing, duh. What am I even talking about? He's Clark. Yeah. Hence the Wilford Brimley joke. Come on, guys. Oh, my God. He is. Holy shit. He's in, he is impossible to recognize under that fucking hat. Okay. Now, I know why it's impossible to recognize is because everyone watched a horrible VHS rip of this thing. <laughs> and that's why you can't recognize who fucking Gomez Adams is. That is exactly why I couldn't recognize uh, Macer as. You're telling me you did not rent this on YouTube? For three dollars? No. F- first of all, I was vehemently <laughs> against that um, because I was like, it has to exist somewhere. And lo and behold, it sure does. It does. Vimeo, where <laughs> everything lives. 
Well, they're actually doing a, they're doing a HD restoration of this, so get ready for that. Why not? Uh, is it going to mean 16 by 9 or 4 by 3? Who the fuck knows? It's going to be on <laughs> Disney Plus next month. <laughs> is it really? Yep, it's part of their included uh, spooky content that they have. I'll watch it. As long as, as long as they have the old school Jonathan Winters, like, Halloween special with, like, the Mickey Mouse cartoons, I'll be happy. Yes. yes. Yeah, that would be cool. With the fucking fake Ghostbusters? Jesus, I hope so. They have, like, all 19 Halloween Town movies, too. Matt, you want to crunch this? You seem to be the uh, resident expert on this film. Oh, what, Mr. <laughs> Buggity? Yeah, sure I am, actually. <laughs> I reference these movies all the time, and people give me weird looks. They're like, what the fuck is Mr. Buggity? I'm like, it's it's classic. <laughs> you children. What do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> give us a plot crunch of this. The plot crunch, all right. Yeah, so... uh this family, they move into uh, Lucifer Falls. Uh, ah! They move up. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, great name for <laughs> great name for a town, right? Uh, they move to Lucifer Falls. It's going to be their first house. Uh, too bad it's a haunted house. They run into Gomez Adams. He's the leader of the historical society uh, in this uh, Lucifer Falls town, and he basically tells them, "You should just leave. Get out." Get the hell out of here. Pretty much. This this is very, very dangerous. Get the hell out. And then it turns out they're being haunted by an angry pilgrim man? They are. In a club? They're being ha- haunted by the angry pilgrim man and <laughs> an angry and, an, and, a, and a sad pilgrim boy. Uh, P.S., the little, we'll get to it, but the little boy is somebody from a movie that's near and dear to me. Troll? Mm, no, Munchie. Oh, no, Munchie. Is Munchie the one that's like another Gremlins ripoff? Uh, it's the sequel to the Gremlins ripoff. <laughs> <laughs> How did I fucking know? <laughs> <laughs> I stumbled across that. Just a quick side note. I stumbled across that recently, and I was like, this is just a Gremlins ripoff. And my second thought was, Joe probably loves this movie. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Well, there's three. There's three of them. There's Munchies, the original one. That's the one I saw. Munchie, which is there's a singular Munchie voiced by Dom DeLuise. <laughs> of course, there is. <laughs> and there's a sequel called Munchie Strikes Back. Okay. Oh well, now you've turned me on to it. They just borrow naming conventions from several like Alien, Aliens, but just swap the order. Yeah, sure. It even says right on the fucking tape, it says the smash sequel to Munchies. And I'm like, no, it's not. It has nothing to do with it. <laughs> smash hit. So we open up on this and um, our, the, what, what's the fucking name of these fam? What's their, what's their last name? No idea. No idea? The Weasleys. The Davises. The Davises. The Davises uh, move into the move into are 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 having a picnic or some shit in their fucking gags or us mobile. Yes, no, that's just dinner. They live in that van. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's their. They house. live there. Uncle Eddie's driving the fucking car with his fucking robot teeth and everything. And man, we there's like a whole like throughout this whole film, like I get it, like you know the family runs the or the the dad runs the the gag shop. But, like, the kids are, like, super into it. Like, the little kids. Of course they are. Yeah, and they, they're, they like, throwing fake puke at their sister. And they have the <laughs> fucking uh, glasses with the eyeballs that pop out and shit. This looks like the most exhausting man to be married to. Because it doesn't <laughs> seem like there's a single second that goes by where he's not, like, it's like, Oh, breakfast is served. Oh, look, your eggs are rubber. <laughs> and, they, and they're spray guns. They're spray eggs. Yeah, that's the that was the kicker. Yeah, how long does that go for the wife is like, I want a fucking divorce. <laughs> Here, here's a fucking game for you. Here's a game for the people at home. Watch this movie, and every time he says he was kidding, take a shot. <laughs> I'd be fucking dead. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Especially there's one point towards the end where I think he says it four times in a row. You'd be just on the floor. Uh, in the sequel, he says it about ten times in a row. <laughs> because he gets because he gets possessed by Mr. Boogity and he floats around the room. And he's just saying, just kidding. Just kidding. And they're like, well, he's clearly been possessed by a ghost. What's he doing? He's possessed by a ghost. I don't know. It sounds like dad's just kidding. Clearly, if, you know, if you're possessed by Boogity, you just had... You just say your catchphrase over and over again, much like Boogity does. Yeah, he's and he takes a nap on the ceiling. It's great. <laughs> Definitely did not steal that from Mary Poppins. Well, they can't steal it from Mary Poppins. They own that IP. Oh, <laughs> it's Disney. <laughs> well, now it's all now it's all canon. So got you. Yeah, there you go. Um, so they roll up to this house, this haunted house in New England, which signed me the fuck up for this because uh, <laughs> it seems like you got a good deal on it. Oh, this is fucking Whipstaff. Like, oh yeah. 666 Shadowbrook Road. Yeah, Realtor, CB, Karloff. And I was sitting there wondering, is this guy related to fucking Boris Karloff, or is he related to CB Smith? And I, you know, I gotta ask Smith now <laughs> to see if he has any relation. It's a, it's a universal, uh, you know, merging. Somebody's grandmother slept with somebody's grandfather. It's a complicated thing. I, I could see it. I mean, maybe CB's related to Karloff. I don't know. 
It's possible. They did the fusion dance. <laughs> oh, God, imagine. And C.B. Smith came out. <laughs> I mean, he did just do that Bambi review, guys. It was pretty fucked up. You got to check it out. But yeah, they, they, they this fucking house, uh, it's a beautiful house, but it looks like the goddamn Draniac house. It's so fucking beat up and in shambles. <laughs> it sure does. I was waiting for Plummer to walk around the corner at some point. I heard the gut, I heard the gut boogity. You got a boogity in the pipes. You got a boogity. I don't deal with boogities. I only deal with Draniac. I, Goodbye. I don't do the boogities. Could I have some whiskey? Oh, we got phantasms here. It's been 25 years since I stepped into the Draniac house. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna call somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> and he runs away. Doesn't even shave his beard. And he fucking, he just leaves like, oh, by the way, you're about out of cores. See ya. Got a date with Granny. They go inside and like, this house is like, first of all, they, like outside, you're like, cool, haunted house. You go inside, you're like, oh, never mind. That should be condemned. <laughs> it's just, it's just cobwebs and dirt and dust and like it doesn't look livable at all like he's like oh yeah the dad's like oh it's a fixer upper i'm like no it's a fucking bulldoze it and start over kind of project yeah this is a, it's a total mess this is like an old fucking mdu cliche at this point like we had the fucking house and house of the dead the guy's doing lab experiments everything's covered in dust and then american werewolf in paris fucking seraphine's house is covered in dust like what is, what is with people in these fucking movies no one's got a goddamn duster well matt said it best last time it's because it's spooky you got to keep it spooky. Oh. But in House of the Dead, that place was so secretly sterile, you could keep a slide of blood on it, and the cells would still move around, <laughs> like, 50 years later. This blood is 75 million years old, but I'm going to make some zombies. It's, it's still not somehow clotted. No. Spanish magician or some shit. I mean, it was G's blood, to be fair. So they're looking for the lights, and Mom picks up a fucking skull? <laughs> She's yes. like, yeah. oh, that's the not that's not the light switch. She thought it was a lamp or some shit, right? Yeah, and picks it up, like, and she's like, I found a lamp. And then they, they get some Oops. light on it, and she's like, ah. <laughs> John Aston comes in, and he's like, hi, how you doing? Did you buy the house? <laughs> Don't gloss over his entrance. Like that, okay? He is dressed like Jack the fucking Ripper. Yeah, like, right standing in the shadows. <laughs> With a fucking ten gallon hat on. Yeah, he doesn't. He's not even like. There's no entrance. He's just hiding in their house. He's, he's in the house. <laughs> he's like the fucking Baba Duke in there, man. He's just covered <laughs> in shadows. Speaking of Karloff, he looks like fucking I Vertilac from fucking Black Sunday. Yes! Yeah, he's dressed like a he's dressed like a 1930s horror character. Yeah, like he's got his fucking eyes are all done. He's got his big old hat and his collared fucking jacket. The fucking Baba Duke. <laughs> Boogity. Oh man, and he's like, he's like, hello, this house is fucked. You should leave. Yes. <laughs> well, the pisser is, he goes up to that fucking skull the mom was playing with, and he reaches into like the eyeball and turns the switch, and all the lights turn on. He fucking fingers that eye socket, and the lights turn on, and I'm like, he really is Gomez. <laughs> yeah, you know, with the Uncle Fester connection. Although, you know, in that version of the Adams family, Fester was like his cousin or some shit, or Morticia's brother. But we're gonna forget that. My brother. Unless we're talking about, you know, the ABC Family version when you know there was a different cast but then john astin came in as like grandpa adams you know i've got i've got the fucking deep adams family lore here all all packed in my head clearly i didn't know there was an abc family adams family well you know when your dad's a huge fucking adams family fan uh you watch the abc family fucking renewal when it came oh, out no yeah but you know oh, what no. you can keep that and that new monsters they did yeah no thanks uh what there was a new monster oh mockingbird lane some shit like that i don't know i liked it <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> I liked it. I'm gonna have to look that up. It was it was a pilot. That was, that was it, and they never got picked up. It's a shame. Oh, I'm talking about there was like uh, I think it was like an ABC Family, like the Munsters, like do 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 do. Oh, doo. Yeah. okay. I thought you were talking about the thing that was done by uh, the guy who did Hannibal, Brian Fuller. You no, wrote it? no, I don't even know what that is. Oh fuck, it's awesome. Is uh, it good? Uh, Jerry O'Connell is in it. Uh, okay. Uh, Eddie Izzard plays Grandpa. Whoa. What? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, it's actually awesome. Like, it's like this, like, weird, darkish reboot of the monsters. Portia de Rossi is Lily. Like... What? Yeah, man. How did I yeah. miss this? I, I totally missed this. How did this get this. by all of us? Yeah. It's from 2012. Yeah. And it's that old? Jesus. I don't know how I missed that. Anyway, I gotta check it out. Jerry O'Connell is, hun is Munster. He basically... Grandpa creates him because, like, no one's good enough for his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty interesting. I like so he's that. like, well, he's like, fine, I'll just make a guy for it. <laughs> oh, man. But does he talk like Al Lewis, though? No. no, no oh, no, I no. wish he, he did. He, he kind of talks like Eddie Izzard. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also pretty great. Yeah, definitely try to track that down. It's 
fucking cool. That sounds fascinating. But uh, so uh, John Aston's this is where the uh, hand buzzer gag yes. uh, actually happens. He walks up, shakes his hand, and he gets a little zap. He's like, hand buzzer? And the dad's like, yeah, I sell them by the box. And he, John Aston pauses and goes, they expensive? <laughs> <laughs> That Gomez always for a bargain. And kind of he he pauses he pauses as if to ask like, okay, well, how much for a bundle? Like, yeah, right, yeah, right. <laughs> I was waiting for him to be like, how can you get me a deal? Yeah, how lucrative is this? <laughs> can I have a box to just put in a historical society? It'll just sit there and collect dust, but maybe someone will buy one. Do you have a business partner? Maybe Eugene Levy can use them in the sequel. <laughs> yeah, I think he does. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh yeah! What? Eugene Levy's in the sequel. Yes, I need to see this now. I, I listen. I knew what it was, but I've never seen it. So now, now I need to track this shit down asap. It's fucking great. That man doesn't say no to anything. But this is where he's like, uh, uh, John Aston's like, this house is ultra spooked. You should move right <laughs> now, even out. though you just moved your entire family up here with all your stuff and what is seemingly your house on wheels. Mind you, this man has just been sitting in the dark waiting for them to come for who knows how long. <laughs> he's not even a supernatural being. He's the fucking head of the historical society. <laughs> yeah, that's it. He's been sitting in their living room. The whole time. <laughs> He's just chilling. I mean, let's be honest, guys. He was probably squatting in there, and he heard somebody's <laughs> truck pull up, and he had to, you know, fix his shirt and fucking stand there and wait for it to make an entrance. Sir, aren't you going? Aren't you going to go home? Uh, well, here's the thing. <laughs> the jig is up. You got to move out because there's a ghost. Kind of been camped up here for a while. I'm the head of the historical society. Randy Quaid's in the other room, charging. <laughs> oh no. Get him out of here. Bosh, I, I cleaned the cobwebs, Bosh. I told you not to clean the cobwebs. <laughs> More cobwebs. Fucking 63. And then he fucks the vacuum cleaner. Oh, my God. It, oh, yeah, the fucking one that the clown pops out of later? Yes. Yeah, that would turn him on. <laughs> Oops. This thing's sucking me nice. <laughs> What? And of course the dad's like, move? <laughs> no, we're here for <laughs> We're stuck. I made bad investments. That's it. The buck stops here. Dude, like, and when he walks in and this house is in fucking shambles, he's like, yeah, see? A fixer-upper. Isn't this great? He's like Ray in fucking Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> Does this pole still work? This is wonderful. This, this is, I'm gonna get my stuff. <laughs> we should sleep here, you know, try it out. Oh, uh, dad, we live here now. Oh, yeah. Well, I was just kind of fucking with you. Yeah, get your stuff. Pick your bed. How many rubber eggs do they need to sell to make the mortgage <laughs> on this house? First of all, this guy ain't selling any rubber eggs because I don't think anyone <laughs> but like a third grader is going to buy a rubber egg. Who in the middle of New England's like, you know what? We need a gag shop out here ASAP. Your, your kind of business is exactly what this dead colonial town <laughs> has been needing for years. Gag City is a profitable enterprise, apparently. Apparently. I know I saw Harry Potter. In the sequel, it's a profitable enterprise. <laughs> everybody's, everybody's buying whoopee cushions and fake puke. It's the most popular place in town. You know, Silly Putty was hot around 84 having lived in a point pleasant beach new jersey and living in some place was just like wow time has glossed over this area um where you can watch a go oh, what's that opening across the street oh it's a it's called the cauldron it sells occult items and all kinds of other stuff i'll be gone in a week mm -hmm. sure will yeah but gag city would be there for a century <laughs> it would <laughs> On the note of uh, them coming in this house and talking about it being a fixer-upper, I don't see any beds being brought in, mattresses, sheets, plates, anything like that. They lived in their truck. So are you telling me they just laid down on these dusty fucking beds? Yes. <laughs> oh, why? First of all, first of all, they constructed crude bedrooms by stocking up all those boxes of hand buzzers everywhere. <laughs> that's the only thing I ever see moved into this fucking house is boxes of bullshit. Where's the clown wigs? I need to use it as a pillow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's sleep on this vacuum cleaner. <laughs> uh, and then we get the... Um, so John Aston's like... Uh, he's talking to Christy Swanson at one point, and he's like, "He's like, I got a son your age. Yeah, <laughs> he's a fucking weirdo that we never see. No, and he just—that's the way that ends. He's just like, yep, he's strange because he's out in, in fucking Mordor dropping off a ring. That's why. That's why he's not around. <laughs> that's why his son isn't around. <laughs> I got a son. He's got hairy feet. <laughs> He's telling stories in a fucking tent somewhere about donkey lips and fucking getting his arm rips off by fucking giant mutant flies. Deep cut the willies. Come on, guys. Nope. I uh, don't uh, even nope. know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> right over my head. Maybe we'll do that one because it's fucking great. Next summer. It's sitting on my shelf. <laughs>
I thought you were referencing Stranger Things. Thanks for that one, Joe. I have that because of you. <laughs> oh, good. Enjoy that. Um, so, uh, daughter, um, uh, Buffy, I'm just gonna call her. Yeah, name, Christy. I forget. Uh, yeah, she's, like, wandering <laughs> the house, and she hears, uh, she hears ghostly sneezing. <laughs> Which, like, is, for, as far as haunted houses go, I, I kind of sat there and went, like, that's actually a new one on me, and I'm not sure how I'd feel if I just heard disembodied sneezing. No, thank you. I thought that's why he was called Mr. Boogity. And I was like, oh, because he's sick, and he, like, shoots boogers and shit all over the place? <laughs> but that's not the case, unfortunately. No. He just looks like a booger. Well, she's walking around the house, and there's this fucking poltergeist room. With the lights coming out around the fucking door. Yeah, the Lords of Salem room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's walking up. Huh, that doesn't seem right. Huh. <laughs> the Lords of Salem room. There's a giant slimy fucking disgusting undulating tunnel in the closet. Damn right. <laughs> and then it go, oh, and then it go, oh, so another door to Coraline's upside down where people have buttons for eyes. Oh. <laughs> uh... I love when she's going upstairs before she goes in this room. She's like, geez, you think nobody, you, nobody around here has ever heard of Bruce Springsteen. And I'm like, "I thank God nobody has. And that's when I knew these people were from fucking New Jersey. And they finally got out. It's not many, not many. It is impossible for anything, even a haunted house in New England, to not know what Bruce Springsteen is, okay? In the 80s. Especially. Yeah, in 1986, come on, I'm surprised the house didn't sing the streets of Philadelphia <laughs> back to her, okay? It's not many. Y'all gonna get boogity now. Boogity in a haunted house. One in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Bruce Springsteen, by the way. Um. So yeah, she opens the fucking door. She opens this fucking door, and then uh, she gets spooked like a librarian from Ghostbusters. She's like, ah! And then she kind of, like, goes comatose for a couple seconds. Yeah, she passes out. Meanwhile, the brothers are in the fucking basement, and like Matt was talking about earlier, the, the younger brother, fucking Alf, he puts the uh, teddy bear <laughs> that's Alf. carrying around on this this little tiny-ass rocking chair, and uh, Bud calls him over to, like, look at something they see, like, in the corner, and, uh, you know, the parents call him up to come upstairs, and they turn around, and uh, Alf's like, oh, my Teddy's gone. Yep, Teddy got took. Teddy got taken by the by the other ghost kid, the ghost child. Oh no, we gotta call Liam Neeson. Yeah, <laughs> I heard you took a bear. Liam Neeson comes in that house and just like goes full close quarters combat and Mr. Boogity and just like breaks his arm in four places and then straps into an electric chair. <laughs> oh my god! And he's just like Boogity boo hoo hoo. He's like, tell me where I need to know, and he stabs him in the thighs. <laughs> I mean, based on the way this movie ends, that I that could actually happen. He's going to strap fucking one end of power cables to his nutsack and another to a fucking car <laughs> exactly. battery and call it a day. Yep. And the rocking chair moves, doesn't it? Yeah, it like rocks back and forth. Yeah, it goes dun 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 Yes. I got an A on the math test. <laughs> <laughs> I got an A. <laughs> but you got a C on the science test. Anyway, so... um. Now we get rubber eggs. Rubber egg breakfast. Yeah, and eat the eggs. The Alf kid says, <laughs> like giving it away immediately. Yeah, the, the kid who's just, yeah, the kid. Eat the eggs. Try the eggs. Okay. <laughs> Try the eggs. <laughs> Dad, I'm tired. Dad, I'm tired of this. Then I'm gonna shoot you in the face with a fucking squirting egg. Does this guy get up like an hour before his family to set up all these fucking gags? Because he's also got like a piece of tape or some shit strung to the fucking toaster of him to fuck with his wife who's making waffles or something. So you guys like just. You guys just moved in. Are you doing any unpacking, or are you just like getting all your your gags ready for the morning? Listen, remember they're they're just using all the furniture that was there. Uh, they took a Clorox wipe to some of it, not all of it, some of it, <laughs> and they're good to go. Also, like the wife isn't laughing at any of this shit. Okay, I think the wife has gone over the deep end a long time ago. Okay, because when the kids come back to the house later, all of a sudden she's into it now. Oh, you should see her in the second one. She loves it. <laughs> I know, man. Up until this point, she, <laughs> she the fucking screw finally came loose because like, yeah. she's like, this is stupid. This is dumb. She's like, I guess this is my life now. Yeah. yeah but there's a moment in this movie where I think we see the glass crack like in her brain where she just starts like laughing insanely at something that's really fucking stupid. Uh, especially with that laugh, she must have gone insane. <laughs> she's like, she's like, 
<laughs> she said, she sounds like a fucking donkey that got kicked in the balls. She's fucking like she goes she goes full Martha Wayne Joker. She's loses her fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost time. The secret code is Gag City. Send us a direct message on Instagram for a chance to win this week's Trick or Trash giveaway. Again, the secret code is Gag City. And remember, kids, the clock is ticking. Don't miss it. I also have to say, like, even though this scene kind of sets up more so that this dad's a fucking prankster, uh... It really doesn't accomplish anything because we could have just had this next scene happen instead of this scene and the scene prior to it. But you got those cool eggs. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we wouldn't have had the eggs. But, you know, you, instead of her opening the closet, seeing something, but not really seeing something, rubber eggs, toaster oven, squirting egg, uh, it goes then right back to her walking down this fucking hallway, like at nighttime with her robe on, going back down to that fucking doorway. Yeah, what is with that? Well, they, well plus th- this time, man. Not only does she see Boogity, she sees a friend of, well, I'm going to rephrase that. She sees fucking Zool, man, like straight up. <laughs> I was going to say, this is, this is very, the Ghostbuster references are flying fast and loose here. It's 1986, man. Like It is very Sigourney Weaver opening her refrigerator. Yeah. <laughs> right on the fucking heels. Yeah, the fucking rubber eggs and everything. Except these didn't cook themselves on the table. Oh my god, I didn't even make that connection. She gets knocked out, and then apparently all her family's like surrounding her when she wakes up, and her mom goes, you just kept saying over and over again, there's no place like home, there's no place like home, there's no place like home. With a really awkward close-up of just her face, like right over, it's just hovering over her daughter. <laughs> well, Connor, haven't you ever seen The Wizard of Oz? I don't know what that is. Someone please remind me. It's a movie. It's a movie? Oh, we're referencing films. Oh, I see what we're doing now. Oh. <laughs> a talkie, if you will. A, t- a talkie. <laughs> My my point is, I think they were like, obviously they're making a Wizard of Oz joke, but I think I, I wonder if they were trying to do like a one to one where it's like, oh, remember when Dorothy woke up? Well, it's the same exact shot, except far more disturbing for some reason, because <laughs> her, her mom's not concerned at all. She's like, you passed out, and then you said that line from that movie. <laughs> 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 you had them fucking red slippers on or whatever. I don't remember buying you those. Is that from the fucking Gag City or what? <laughs> they have Gag Ruby slippers. You click, you click your heels and they just squirt you with water. <laughs> <laughs> your fucking feet curl up. I don't understand this. Was this Mr. Boogity's actual footprints or just more bullshit from the dad? Oh yeah, there's fucking footprints and and the dad's like, oh yeah, Gomez put these here. Hey, you know, hey, look, I could take them off and stick them to my face. A uh, thing I've never seen before. I'm just gonna pick it up and slap it on. <laughs> <laughs> he, this guy's putting this ectoplasmic footprint shit like all over his face and stuff. He's like, look, it's great. It sticks to everything. I'm going to make a fortune. It's going to put Pickles toys on the map. Pickles toys. What, is he got a fucking pterodactyl robot in the basement? <laughs> he might. He's fucking bopping his boppo. Like, imagine if his face just started fucking melting. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Or at the very least, he breaks out in something horrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? He's got that boogity juice on him. He starts to look like boogity. He looks like that one guy in fucking thinner that gets turned into a lizard person. This movie gets really dark really fast. You guys talk about Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2, but this next fucking scene really seals the deal. The fucking kids, the, the two brothers, Alf and Married, and tri- married with Children... They're fucking in the kitchen like here. Yeah. They're, they're, wait, what? They're fucking in the kitchen? They're what? No! God damn! They're in the fucking kitchen. <laughs> Christ. This movie gets really dark really fast. Alf. Um, yeah, Alf's fucking one of them, probably. <laughs> <That's pretty real. laughs> Looking for a goddamn cat. You better be quiet about this, kid. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> but it's really like Frank Oz with his hand up the puppet's ass. <laughs> Go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> so they're in the kitchen... And they're they're joking about how the sister's a moron for getting scared. There's, this house isn't haunted. Yeah, it's not haunted. Well, then you get the old man-eating toaster trick, and this fucking toaster starts dancing all over the place. And the cabinets are going crazy. Yeah, that number one Christmas boutique gift item fucking goes nuts. I like how these kids walk up to it, and their first reaction to seeing a levitating toaster is to go, hmm, no strings. Like, that means your dad will likely drive you to wit's end at some point, because if you're just questioning everyday appliances all the time, like, all right, where's the gimmick? Like, <laughs> I can almost see, like, what Matt was talking about earlier, how this was originally, like, pitched as a horror movie, like a like a spoof, because I could almost see that in, like, a legit horror movie, 
where people think it's like a fucking gag because they have this like wacko dad and it's like actually it's some fucking like ghost about to like ruin your day (laughs) when did student bodies come out though that came out in like 1980 didn't it i don't even know what that is oh dude you never saw student bodies i have no idea what that is (laughs) oh man it's like a slasher it's like a spoof on all the slasher movies like way before like scary movie and all that shit it's legitimately great um so they see the toaster moving and they're like hey let's go outside for the first time and only time in this movie uh and they decided to go go to the fucking uh lucifer falls historical society where mr witherspoon is passed out on a table love mr witherspoon because i mean what else are you gonna do at a historical society sleep in a pile of, sleep in a pile of dust you take a nap <laughs> I'm surprised this guy wasn't like Blossom from Christmas that almost wasn't with the fucking cobwebs on his shirt. The, I'm going to tell you all about the boogity house now. Oh my God. <laughs> we we got to make a phone call for this scene. I got to knock on the fucking bartender's wall. Ah, yes. This is where the uh, the MDU references are going to fly fast and loose because I think we found the, uh, the, the opposite deity to Woody Harrelson's bartender character. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm, a, I'm only going to say this once, but in... There's an opposite of me. Yeah, I have my own reverse flash. <laughs> I have my own reverse flash. His name... It's, it's, it's not... <laughs> hey, what's his name? <laughs> and it's not Matthew McConaughey. It's not Van Zant. No. Nah, his name's John Ashton. And he has pop-up funnies. <laughs> and he has a pop-up funny book that's just as powerful. Is he like the other side of the coin? Like, is he his yin to his yang? Oh, yeah. Yes, he's the an- he is the anti-monitor to Woody's monitor character, okay? Like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gotta send the Green Lantern Corps after him and fucking Superman. <laughs> he's the fucking he's he's the fucking eater of worlds. End of children. Yeah, end of children. Uh, yeah, they were, but he but he's very casual about it, and he only has just the one book, and it's just the book um, of doom. This is um, also the Christmas book from Santa's sleigh that's locked up in a safe. Then he likes to pull out. That what's his oh. face likes to pull out. Yeah. What is it? The Necromonicon shows up and fucking Jason oh, yeah. goes to hell. It's an Evil Dead. Like that's exactly what it is. It ties everything together. Yeah. It's like the never ending story. And eventually there'll be a comic book come out where where fucking John Aston fights Woody Harrelson. <laughs> Sign me up. I wouldn't honestly be surprised if Daniel Baldwin printed this out of fucking the Buchanan mobile <laughs> and handed it to him like a pop up funny. <laughs> Like Biff, he like walks to the store and he's like, here, make like a tree and get out of here with this. And John Aston's just sleeping, doesn't respond, wakes up and says, <laughs> oh, a little lore about the town. Okay. Oh, a new book. As he fuck, as Daniel Baldwin chugs a fucking bottle of tequila on his way out. Yeah. Dolphin dives out the fucking window, doesn't use the door. <laughs> and then he and then he yells at some old lady, don't fuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> boogity, boogity, boo, lady. Uh, yeah. Boogity, boogity, boo. Yeah. Stand still while I hit you with this fire axe. Oh my God. Is is Daniel Baldwin like okay? Listen, l- l- work with me for a second. Is Daniel Baldwin this fucking pilgrim? It could be in a in a former life. I mean, the character we've seen Daniel Baldwin play in every movie we've seen so far, and movies I've seen him that we didn't do movie dumpster for. He is the kind of guy who'd get really upset about turning being turned down by a woman, so he'd kidnap her her flu stricken son. <laughs> yeah, and hold him hold him for ransom, and hold, hold her hostage for three centuries <laughs> with a magic cloak. <laughs> Um, well, we already know that he has time-traveling powers, so there you go. I mean, it's either that or it's his great-great-great-grandfather, Granddaddy Baldwin. He's his own grandpa. <laughs> the the great Boogity family? <laughs> <laughs> when they landed on Plymouth Rock, the great Boogity family? Yeah, the Boogity, the Boogities. We came here in the great ship Boogity. We built our town where Lucifer could be reached, so we called it Lu- Lucifer Falls. Are they related to the Spookies? I think so. Um, so this is where we get a lore dump, um, uh, from, uh, is it John Aston's like, basically where he earns his paycheck. Yep, telling a spooky story. He's just like, he's like, yeah, Mr. the ghost of Mr. Bookity, he was a piece of shit pilgrim <laughs> who didn't know how to take no for an answer. He had horrible people skills. He made advances on a woman that didn't want it. Yeah, he asked a woman out and she said no, so he's like, I'm gonna kidnap your son. I'm gonna make a deal with the <laughs> devil and get a fucking cape that'll make you love me. <laughs> what is this, Harry Potter? <laughs> I, I know I've already said that a few times, but like, holy shit! I love the devil in this. This flat. Oh, thank you, Matt, because the devil in this is hysterical. He's like, just classic devil. Yeah, he looks like Pitch from Santa Claus. Yeah, I was gonna say he looks like the he. He does remind me of the devil from that. Is it Spanish? The Spanish Santa he, Claus movie. Yeah, 
pitch is his yeah, name. Where he, he's, yeah, yeah, where he's, like, dancing around on this shit. But, like, at some point, he puts this cloak on... What, this guy's name is Hanover before he became Mr. Boogity? William Hanover. He's the godfather of the pretzels. Didn't we have someone else recently in a movie named Hanover? Yeah, uh, Sagat. West Studi. Yeah, West Studi. Oh, that's right, Hanover. <laughs> so he's related to Mr. Boogity. Oh, that makes a little bit more sense. Pantucci's off the side with a fucking gun. He goes to toss it to him. Peanut. In this flashback, like... Hanover's just, like, fucking just scowling at this woman, and then, like, the devil, like, walks up behind him, <laughs> like, here you go, here's a cloak, sir, you look fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just, like, rubbing his shoulder. <laughs> the great fit, Hanover, you do fine. But he makes a deal with Lucifer not to, like, you know, make him immortal, to give him superpowers, to, like, kill the woman. No, give me a magic cape. <laughs> The devil is like, I could do so much more for you, and you just want a cloak. And he's like, yep, give me that cloak. And he's like, all right, it's your deal. It's a nice cloak. It I is mean, a nice cloak. Yeah. This isn't like a party fair cloak. This is like a party city cloak. You know, this is nice. It really brings the boogity together. The Quaker Oats guy would kill for this cloak. Okay. Uh, damn right. He's the best. Yeah, it's that cloak. It's that. That's that cloak they give Fezzik at the end of Princess Bride. Yeah, I mean, Witchfinder General is is jealous. Well, not only does he get this cloak, I, I guess he does get some form of magic powers because as he goes to activate them, I suppose he just doesn't understand them and he blows his fucking house up. Kills everyone. Yes. <laughs> With his kid that he's kidnapped, the, the this widow that that wouldn't marry him's kid. Whoopsie. Yeah. So he he wants to marry this widow. She says no. Her son has a cold. So he kidnaps her son, and he's like, come get her. And then it's, the story ends with, and then he blew up. And he's like, yeah, that's pretty much it. And the, even the even uh, Married with Children and Alpha are like, what are you, he blew up. And he's like, yep, didn't know how to use the cape. Bye. Get out of the shop now. <laughs> get out. Everyone's, everyone's a ghost now. Isn't that a great story? Goodbye. And they all live in your house, because even <laughs> though he blew up his house, the house that was built on there is haunted now. Take a hand buzzer on your way out. <laughs> But they say multiple houses have been built in this property ever since. I'm like, how? What do you mean? It I mean, I said this was the Draniac house, but honestly, since we're talking about Stanley, Stanley Uris, it's probably that fucking house they go to win it. Oh, my God. It's the house on Kneebold Street? Yeah. Pennywise yep. is in that goddamn fridge. Oh, the fucking well is down in the basement? That's where Mr. Boogity's hanging out, yeah. This is a real safe house. That's that's That, that means you should move. Yeah. You know, John Aston, he keeps talking to it in the fucking fridge. He thinks it's his goddamn cousin or something. <laughs> it's the wrong guy, but he doesn't know that. Pennywise is like, I don't know you, Lee. Listen, it's his brother-in-law, and that's the sequel, okay? He's like, hey, uh, it, where'd your hair go? Is that what you look like without it? Well, I'm not following this. Tim Curry's talking to me through my fucking sink. Betty Ripsom's down there. What's up, what's up, Johnny boy? It's both of them fucking Tim Curry and Skarsgård <laughs> are both there. Like, Tim Curry's in the sink and Skarsgård's <laughs> in the fucking fridge. <laughs> it's Corey Feldman and, and uh, uh, Corey Haim talking to him through the sink. Dad, let me borrow the car. I need it. <laughs> I didn't get my license today. Seth Green walks in. Ah, oh, wrong film. <laughs> Oops. Um. So yeah. So the story is basically yeah. He he he. he a, even as ghosts, he won't uh, release this grip on this uh this this poor child who has now has a, who's had a cold for three hundred years. Yeah, he's been sneezing all over this place. You know the 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 mom can't get the kid. Because she's not allowed in the house because she wouldn't, yeah, you know. Yeah, she's just stuck outside as a ghost. The magic has banned her from going into the house? Yes, and it keeps the child within. Or whatever. For a deal that he didn't really work out at all, it has a lot of fucking, like, caveats. It keepeth the child in there. A lot of ith. A lot of ith in this uh, in this movie. Rumpelstiltskin wrote this, wrote this script. Fucketh me is what I have to say. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and they're like, okay, well, that was useless. Bye, uh, weird, uh, weird Jack the Ripper man. Well, I'm done. <laughs> Peace, Gomez. And then, yeah, and John Aston's like, and Justin punches his card and goes and collects his check. <laughs> Damn right. He doesn't have anything else to do. Which is funny because uh, Richard Masser is a former president of the Screen Actors Guild, I believe <laughs> his, uh, his position was. What is it? Wow. wow. I think yeah. he still is. 24th, 24th president of the Screen Actors Guild. Wow. Okay. Good for him. Well, this was before he slid his wrists in the bathtub, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> this is before he was consumed by an alien from outer space. Um. So, so then we go to this fucking scene you guys kind of alluded to earlier, where the kids go back to the house after their little investigation. And, uh, you know, 
the dad just has one gag after another fucking setup. He hasn't unpacked. He hasn't unpacked any of their fucking stuff. He hasn't cleaned the house, but he's got one. He's got a fucking vacuum. Yeah, that shoots uh, ping pong balls or something. Cause why not? Moth balls. It's a sh- <laughs> it's a shop vac. It's yeah. It's like and it shoots them with like the force of like a snowflake. Like it, it barely touches. It's like poop. Uh, there, uh, it, it, the mom says that. He had it commissioned before they moved. And I was like, that was the last of the petty cash, wasn't it? <laughs> That's what they spent their money on. Yes, he's very good with financial decisions. <laughs> I, I think you're underselling this vacuum, though, because <laughs> it's so extravagant. Not only does like it, it suck up mothballs and shoot them back at people, but also like when he tells the daughter to fucking turn it on, this clown pops out of it like it's some fucking like uh, jack-o'-lantern or jack-in-the-box. Well, it's a gag in the box. Gag City. Oh. Hey, Matt, does he sell a bunch of those in the second one? The Jack in the Box? The, the vacuum. No, he dresses up as the clown, though. Oh. That's inside the vacuum. <laughs> Dude, there's like there's like clowns all over this fucking van, and they like have their tongue sticking out, but it looks so weird. It's very bizarre. It's, it's a weird logo design that I don't care for. And he's also got like a life-size mummy that he bought, made, created. Hell yeah. He's like, Duck, this is great, isn't it? I'm like, why are you, Dad, why are you spending the money for groceries on gags? Because it's his life. I bought, I, bought a, I bought a full-size adult mummy. <laughs> let me follow my dreams, kids. <laughs> I'm not going to let three children and a wife drag me down. <laughs> I'm going to get a mummy. This is my life. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. But I really did spend all your college funds on whoopee cushions. Just kidding. <laughs> I know you're all scared of the ghosts, but uh, here's an albino gorilla mask. Dad, sorry I couldn't get you with the Dr. Zayas costume again. <laughs> <laughs> what about my Technicolor dream coat? What do you think? <laughs> Well, the, you know, the parents, they don't believe him about Boogity. Meanwhile, like Connor was saying earlier, the mother finally starts cracking up at all these fucking jokes. Oh, my God. Yeah, she, she goes full on, <laughs> like, fucking donkey laughing at these stupid-ass jokes. She sounds like a mule in heat. <laughs> I mean, she, oh she very God. well might be. Let's be real. Again, footprints. <laughs> um... So then, you know, they, they don't believe them about Boogity, and then, you know, you get, you know, the coup de gras when the fucking piano starts playing by itself and shit starts moving, these fucking fake hands start clapping. I like this part. It gets dangerously close to playing a full-on dinner na 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 like... Well, it's it's a pretty good show. I mean, Boogity knows how to put on a hell of a show, I'll give him that. For a guy that hates everybody, he sure knows how to entertain people. Yeah, it's very Peter Gabriel Sledgehammer for a second, like, everything's going off for a couple seconds. <laughs> yeah, there's like a fucking... The, so the mummy's like dancing in the corner, or the fucking player pianos going off. The, the mummy, the mummy is ska dancing. Okay. Oh, he's skanking it's, around out there. <laughs> it's skanking around the living room. And the, and the fucking the the monster glove hands are like clapping in beat, <laughs> like in midair. And this is the scene where like all the shit just stops, and the kids are like, uh, "Dad, can we leave now?" And he's like, "What are you talking about? It's not haunted. We can't leave. It's it's funny. <laughs> I tell you what. Instead of leaving, let's camp out." What do you say? We got sleeping bags. And they're like, oh, uh, okay. Which, first of all, like, I since I haven't seen anyone actually with a bed, I'm just assuming the sleeping bags have been there the whole time. And Dad's finally like, let's use them. Dad, a rat got in my sleeping bag again. I just hit it with a rubber mallet. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a rubber egg. It'll go away. The rubber eggs are poisonous. Just let it eat it. Spray them with the fucking flour. This leads us to a lot more of the taketh and keepeth when uh, I believe the, the mom... Then she runs into the ghost, right? Yeah, she gets up to get like a midnight snack. P.S. She wants some Ritz. She wants some Ritz crackers. It's fine. Some Ritz crackers. She's got an entire cheese platter on a piece of fucking paper plate. <laughs> she's amazing. She's my hero. <laughs> she's just she's waking up to. She's either pregnant or she's me. Yeah, she's <laughs> she's working on her night cheese. She woke up and burned a. F- Fat fucking J and got the munchies, okay? That's what happened. I was gonna say, she's either pregnant or, like, this is, like, a leftover joke about smoking a giant doob from that fucking other movie that he pitched. How, how do you think she deals with her husband? She gets high all the time. I guess that's why she was laughing already. Lots of night cheese. She hit that fucking Labrador. Yeah, that solves it. Uh, and then she's like, whoa, man, it goes. And the ghost is like, my fucking son's been kidnapped. Oh, my God. And this woman's like... Okay. <laughs> 300 years ago. <laughs> you, you're marrying? Oh, I heard all about you. You want to come inside for a spot of fucking tea or whatever? This this woman's like... 
<laughs> oh, you want coffee? Oh, wait, a ghost allergic to coffee? You can't have coffee? Coffee's bad. Is coffee a bad thing for a ghost? Is coffee <laughs> is, is a ghost? You don't like coffee as a ghost or what? Are you gassy? Is it gas? Is it- <laughs> it's gas, isn't it? It gives you agitas and whatever in your thingy. Reacts this horrible ghost curse that this woman is talking to her about, like with such, <laughs> like just, just like such flippant attitude. She's like, "Wow, that's nice. Do you want some cheese?" <laughs> <laughs> She's like, uh, "Yeah." This is when uh, Marion's like, "Oh, the, the, the house keepeth my soneth in the sideth from the boogadieth, and I'm outsideth, <laughs> and there's a curseth on the houseeth." Kill the cape or whatever. Yeah. Remove the cape from the ghost. Okay. Okay. Sounds like really mundane instructions to beat the supernatural entity, but okay. What do you say, Marion? Listen, he's a corporeal form, apparently. I thought this thing was, like, stashed away in the house. Right! Oh, no, no, no. He's, he's, he, first, the deal this, this guy made with the devil was really one-sided, um, and he, he ultimately came out of it with no advantages. He's like a warlock. He's not even a ghost. Yeah, and it also, like, turned him into a giant pile of, like, like, open cysts or something. Like, he's fucking awful looking. <laughs> well, like I said, man, he looks like the fucking guy from Thinner who gets turned into a lizard person. Yeah, he looks like he looks like chopped meat. It looks like he's made out of grilled cheese. Yeah, yeah, hamburger face. But doesn't she go inside and she's like, "I met a ghost, isn't that nice?" Yeah, and then Bud's like congratulating her, and he's like, "Wow, mom, you went out there and you talked to that ghost, didn't you? I'm I'm so proud of you." All by yourself. Your 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 agoraphobia is getting better. <laughs> <laughs> So then they all pick up a bunch of fly swatters. Yeah, what? Yeah. Yeah, what the f- Because they don't have weapons. Yeah, but it's a ghost. It doesn't matter if you pick up a crowbar or a flippity floppity uh, gag or like the dad does. It's just got like, it's got no impact to it. Foam hammer. Yeah, it's like when I was a kid and uh, you know, you, you pretend to be a Ghostbuster, but you don't have the, the, the pack because you left it at your friend's house. So use a fly swatter instead. And you never saw that pack again. <laughs> That's the real crime, Joe. Or you're my mom who has insane crafting skills and makes you a proton pack out of cardboard and paint. Hell yeah. That's pretty sweet. So you didn't have Ernest, but you had <laughs> a, a cardboard proton pack. I was at a mom who's committed to making lots of bullshit out of like, just, like stuff around the house. Bless. I mean, she also didn't let Connor have any Christmas presents, as we've discussed in the past. <laughs> Get mauled to Sam Whipple. No Power Rangers for him. No Power Rangers for you. I don't want to buy the toys. I'm surprised she didn't make you a Power Ranger. Yeah, pipe cleaners. Uh, I think she eventually conceded when my dad like showed up one Christmas and he's like, I got all the toys of the flipping heads. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> the floodgates are open, Colleen. <laughs> so there was a happy ending to that story. Sam Whipple's fucking wringing his hands in the background. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> He's on the fucking nice list this year. She'll never listen to this. She still doesn't know what a podcast is. <laughs> <laughs> You're on video, right? No, Mom, for the 17th time. <laughs> so so they start, like like uh, you guys were saying, they, they have these fly swatters, and they're going up the stairs because they kind of hear boogity up there in the attic. And some sneezing, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. A little booger on their back of their neck, kind of like the uh, alien encounter ride in Universal or Disney World. He's licking him. He's like, hey, hey, hey. Oh, oh, stop it. Boogity, boogity, boo. Right in your bunghole. He's like, anywhere my footprints are, I can lick and I know where <laughs> to put them. <laughs> oh, God. He's like fucking rump when he's like washing off at the uh, after he fucks that woman. <laughs> Here comes my color forms. I'm going to stick all over your room. Um, But yeah, as they're going up slowly, like first Alf hears a fucking sound in the basement. Then uh, Married with Children hears a sound, and so it's just the parents and the daughter in the attic. And they disband. But then we find out what's in the Lords of Salem room. <laughs> it's just a green light. <laughs> it's just a light bulb, because Boogity's a dick. It's a it's a fucking light it's a light bulb. And the dad's like the dad's like, he tricked us. I'm like, no, you're dumb. Oh, he 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 gave us to he bamboozled us. <laughs> he he but he boogity us. <laughs> we got booed. We got boogity booed. We got we got boogity booed. Um and then the kids are in the basement, and like the the married with children, I think finds Alf uh, tussling with uh, bl- with with blue Kamehameha waves for a couple seconds, and then it's actually a child. Yeah, it's the kid from Munchie. It's the little child, yes, the, with the cold. Who's like, I saw you. I took your bear. <laughs> I've been sneezing all over this house for three hundred years. I wipe my fucking nose on your teddy. It's disgusting. <laughs> and, and your bed sheets, and the curtains, <laughs> and the carpet. Don't look in your closet. And then he, yeah, he's like, I've been stuck here for three centuries and mr boogity is a jerk and i only borrowed your teddy bear i didn't steal it he's like you can have the bear anyway here i feel bad for you 
cold child. Oh, here you can hold it, but not for keeps. Yeah, not for keeps. It's just for it's he's he's got it on loan. He's got Mr. Bear on loan. So then they run upstairs again. Oh yeah, this is when my, this is my favorite part of the movie because now we're introduced to the the biggest thundering dumbass in the paranormal world. This guy's a fucking moron. <laughs> He rules. Mr. Booker, he's, he's the worst ghost I've ever seen. <laughs> he's awesome. He is ineffective as fuck. Because he shows up and he's like, I'm terrifying. Watch me do some parlor tricks. Boogity boogity woo. <laughs> he, he materializes and shoots fucking force lightning into these people's faces and their hair stands up. But it, yeah, it doesn't, it just, it's just static electricity. It just makes their hair stand up. And the dad's like, hey, can we talk about this? Zap. Boogity boo. Nope. All he does is say boogity woogity woogity woo and then just shoots things with lightning and makes things move. But, but you can, you can hit him with baseball bats or something. You can, <laughs> you can do to him what they did to Pennywise the new age just circle them bully him. He is affected by sneezing powder. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. They, yeah. Like, yeah, he's he's spooking this family and the, the two boys are like, here, blow this in his face and I'm gonna whack him with this fu- oh, no, I'm gonna get the cloak. We got this from Rumple Stiltskin. Gag City to the rescue. Alvin's like, This is sneezing powder, you slime and then throws it it blows it yeah. at him. And he's like ah! <laughs> and then he he sneezes. He sneezes. And I'm like, oh, I'm at, at some point. At the, I was almost like, okay, so is this when he falls down and they pull the mask off him? And they're like, they're like, <laughs> oh, it was secretly the mayor. It's Mr. Jenkins. It was Gomez. It was Mr. Witherspoon the whole time. I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for your stupid family and your gags. There's a there's a load of money buried under this house. <laughs> <laughs> Pilgrim money. I moved the cemetery, but I didn't move the bodies. What do you think I was doing here at fucking two in the morning when you showed up? Yeah. Yeah, with with speakers that sneeze. <laughs> yeah, they just he just kind of sits there and he's like boogity boogity. That's all he says is boogity boogity. Yeah, he he boogities the fucking. Uh, I think uh, I think Bud goes after him with like a fucking uh, fireplace shovel. Yeah, and he's like boogity boo, and he turns it into a fucking balloon, and he starts floating up into the air. And then the dad goes to rescue him by getting a ladder, even though he can reach him. Yeah. And then he boogadies the ladder, and he's just, like, walking up and down the ladder for the rest of the film. He's just stuck in an infinite loop until his kids save the day. <laughs> yeah, because, like, he boogadies... Okay, and then boogity is the fucking master of his own undoing. He he fucking boogadies the fucking vacuum cleaner, which starts chasing the one kid around at, like, 0. .2 miles an hour. But it's scary. It's, it's, it's terrifying. It's so scary, he has to slowly back away from it. Oh, oh, it's really scary. He's like a dog. He doesn't like to vacuum. <laughs> Why do you think the mom hasn't cleaned this this house yet? Because the kids are terrified of the vacuum. Their son barks at it. We might get sucked into it, mom. <laughs> it reminded me of that Tales from the Dark Side episode where the kid invents like this noise uh, sucker. And uh, it's like a vacuum cleaner that like sucks the noise and the life out of things. Jesus. It's a good episode. It sounds like my job. <laughs> It's like a Dalek without the extra weaponry to make it actually terrifying. It just fucking rolls around. It's like, is that a plunger in the front of you? Maybe. But then, like, I can't remember how, but this vacuum cleaner gets close enough to Boogity, and it grabs a hold of the end of his cloak and just <laughs> just sucks it off of him. Yeah, the kid, uh, Alf, runs around him, and he's like, no, get it away from me. And he's like, get, get, get out of there. Get out of my ass or whatever. Get out from behind me, he says, or some shit. Get out of my ass? What is this, the fucking Chinese translation Revenge of the Sith? <laughs> <laughs> Backstroke of the West. Yeah, then the fucking cape gets sucked into the, the, uh, the vacuum. And, uh... That's it? That's his undoing? Yeah, Booty dies like Freddy from whatever that one movie is where he spins around and turns into a bunch of lights. That's three, isn't it? That's three. That's Dream Warriors. Ah, John Saxon dug up my bones and lit him on fire. <laughs> and then a dog peed on them later. Meanwhile, like, in a, yeah, in another part of town, John Aston's like, lighting his fucking bones on fire. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the backyard. Like, Dude, John Aston's sitting there fucking smoking a cigar with both Pennywise. <laughs> Hitting fucking golf balls. Yeah. Skarsgård and fucking Curry are playing cards with fucking, you know, just like chowing down on a couple of kids. The kids from this film, believe it or not. Yeah, the, the Pennywise is like, you, you finally got that guy out of our house? Thank God. Yeah, isn't the arm the best part, Pennywise? Yeah, it is Pennywise. And they're both chowing down. <laughs> it sure is, John Aston. <laughs> John Aston just rolling his eyes. He's like, 
Uh, Get it together already. <laughs> uh, leave, leave dairy for God's sakes, you bunch of layabouts. And then Sid Haig fucking comes over and is like, what did you say about clowns, boy? Rest in peace. R.I.P. Fried chicken. God, imagine if Sid Haig was in this fucking movie. I don't uh, know, man. <laughs> just fucking Captain Spaulding comes in and just butchers all these people. <laughs> <laughs> or no, he's, he's, he's the role of John Aston. When I come back, if you say you don't like clowns, I'm going to kill your fucking family. Who said you could move into my fucking haunted House. Don't you think we're funny? <laughs> no, he makes a. He actually makes a. He makes a cameo in the sequel where he runs the tutti frutti ice cream stand. I don't know if you knew this. <laughs> there is no ice cream in your fucking future. Now I gotta see this movie, man. So then they 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 take the cape away, the cloak, whatever, and most and, and Boogity seemingly dies. They throw it away, Boogity Boogity Boo, and it's gone. He dematerializes. Then the clown pops out of the fucking vacuum, and there's still like a shard of the cloak. Mm-hmm. And then Bud grabs it and goes boogity boo, and then throws it in the air, and it fucking it, it explodes. Yeah, into green shit. And the clown uh, basically winks at them, and they're like, "Oh, well, at least the house not haunted anymore." And then you know the the, the clown looks at him and is like, "Want a bet?" Yeah, it, it winks at him. But before this, uh, the uh, widow Miriam and Jonathan get a very uh, casual resolution to that awful curse that was placed on them three centuries ago. They're just like, "Yeah," they're like, "Cool, thanks, bye." <laughs> it's like a it's like a bad Are You Afraid of the Dark episode. They're just like, you did the thing that let us go. Here's a hanky. Bye. Because he's sneezing. <laughs> and then it fades out to us recording this podcast talking about it. <laughs> this whole movie takes place inside the Soul Gym. Listen, Connor, my, my, my body's not ready for such revelations at the moment. <laughs> wait, wait. Did you boogity? I boogadied. But at what cost? <laughs> Did you boogie, boogie lightning? That's what you did, yeah. Yeah, and then it just it just ends after the fucking clown winks. <laughs> clown winks and it's over. Yep, the end. And then Bride of Boogity happens. Bride of Boogity happens about two years later. Yeah, yeah, two years where that where they're the most popular family in town. Ugh. Everyone everyone loves them except for Eugene Levy. It's great. They're the most popular family in town because they're the only ones who ever rolled in there with enough common sense to get rid of the fucking ghost that lives in the decrepit house like but they also in the second one they also really lean into the whole we lived in a haunted house thing like anytime they get a visitor they like scare the shit out of them oh yeah <laughs> of course yeah, they are they are great right in the beginning like the uh his the brother-in-law shows up yeah the wife's the wife's brother shows up and they just scare the shit out of him and he's like oh you you get me every time oh you got me partners it's great <laughs> so for our trick or trash we gotta pick our candy so what do we got in our treat bags today? I'll go first as I thought about this. I think me and Sean actually thought about this all day today. Um, th th I actually love this a great deal, despite the fact that it is kind of objectively awful. Um, <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's, it's really stupid and it's just full of really corny shit, but it's it's really endearing. Um, it's This is a singular Reese's peanut butter cup, and it's it's very brief, but it's delicious, and I love it. <laughs> that's, that's very simple and to the point. That's really all I have to say. I don't know if it's... it's it's old timey 1980s Disney Channel yeah. charm that you can't really like doesn't really exist anymore, and it's got a they don't make them like that. And anymore. it's got a shoestring budget and weird celebrity appearances, and a ghost that's so stupid and just ineffective that the whole thing kind of ends up as being very entertaining. So, yeah, um, this is this is a this is a fun size Milky Way for me. <laughs> Same route. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, same same kind of thing. It's like, you know, I don't have any built-in nostalgia for this because I don't, re I, for the life of me, I can't remember watching Mr. Boogity as a child. Um, Man. But it transported me. I'll tell you what, I felt like a little kid sitting on that couch watching this, like, ooh, it's it's like it's a Disney Halloween special of the week, you know? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to have to agree with Connor on this one. Um, it was a little sweet nugget that uh, it was brief and delicious and, um, yeah. I, 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 I'll watch it next Halloween. Um, you know, I, I'm going to call this little guy a uh, Jolly Rancher. And uh, I say that because I used to love Jolly Ranchers back in the day, especially as a kid. And I feel like if I saw this movie as a kid, I would have been super fucking into it. But uh, I didn't really like this movie. Um, you know, it was just... I, I'm not the fucking demographic, you, you know, I, I like some of the spookier elements, like towards the end when the house starts really freaking out when Boogity makes his presence known and like the fucking light bulbs are blowing up and fucking papers and shit are flying all over the place. But uh, I, make, I make the Jolly Rancher comparison because, you know, when I'm younger, you know, I, I could eat fucking a whole pack of those goddamn things. No problem. 
But uh, 31, looking out on the uh, barrel of a gun, I don't know if I want to be chewing on Jolly Ranchers uh, until my teeth fall out. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that got a lot more morbid than I intended it to. But yeah, Jolly Jesus. Rancher. <laughs> not bad, but not great either. All right. Uh, for me, uh, I know what you guys are talking about this time, so that helps. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're not just uh, throwing me out of the bus here with pick a candy. Yeah. You had a year to prepare, I hope so. <laughs> Trick or treat. All right, uh, this is a movie that I grew up on. I grew up on a VHS of this and the sequel. Kind of wore out that tape. It has everything I love about Halloween rolled into one delicious little package. Uh, so I'm going to go with a take five. Ah. Okay. Which has everything I love in a candy rolled up into one delicious package. Uh, you got your uh, your silly jokes, your, uh, your goofy scares, uh, some ridiculous set design, and you have Gomez Adams. Uh... I love this movie. I watch it every Halloween. It's it's one of my favorites. It's a tradition. You know, you mentioned Gomez Adams, and I'm reminded of that. So I guess you know, you know, it's not just a Jolly Rancher. It's it's a blue raspberry Jolly Rancher. Okay, guys. Ooh. <laughs> That's fair. Higher tier Jolly Rancher, in my opinion. Is it a booberry? Oh, oh, you know what? I just had some Frankenberry. So sure. <laughs> oh man, I've been eating it all week. I got I got chocula, Frankenberry, and Booberry on fucking rotation this week. Bring back Yummy Mummy, you cowards. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> fucking A. The best one easy. What the hell? Forgot all about that guy. They brought it back one year, and now they're like, no, he's back in the vault. <laughs> Him and Fruit Brute, never again. Bye. Oh, man, Fruit Brute. Even though we have the recipe to make it. Even though they have it. They just, they make it. They make it. I, I will say, though, you know, looking back at last year's uh, Trick or Trash, it blows Medea and fucking American Werewolf in Paris out of the water water you know for what it's worth well yeah well i mean speaking of medea and water that movie is like being held in a barrel of it for like seven minutes at a time like it's just it's unbearable <laughs> i would watch this nine thousand times again before i watched either of those <laughs> however many times i can fit this movie into Med- boo medea's runtime is how many times i would watch it over <laughs> boo medea okay i think i think it fits comfortably like twice Two and a half. Yeah, I would sit, sit through two of these in a row and sit through that fucking piece of shit ever again. <laughs> and honestly, Matt, we 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 did uh our, our we did our blockbuster bomb series, and we, you know, we we had Thirteenth Warrior in there, we had Deep Rising, we even had Clash of the Titans, the remake. Uh, but we had Pluto Nash and Green Lantern in there, man, and that shit was rough. So I'm glad we got to something that I didn't totally hate. Yeah, this is a nice palate cleanser, and it is it's a nice. Uh, You're welcome. <laughs> it's a nice introductory film to to this month, and um, yeah, kicked up them spooks. I'm in the mood. I don't know about you guys. Hell yeah. I think I finally am. Thanks, Boogity. I'm ready to bite down into something else. Yeah, Matt. Is there anything you want to plug? Indeed, I do. Uh, me and uh, I have a friend. His name is uh, Jacob DeNoble. Uh, we have a podcast over at Talk Film Society right now called Monsters Never Die, uh, where we look at all the original Universal monsters as well as their reimaginings, uh, ripoffs, and remakes. So uh, it's a lot of fun, and hopefully it'll continue beyond spooky season. So are you doing? Uh, are you doing Tom Cruise as the Mummy? Because it's a bit of a joke around here at Movie Dumpster. We mentioned it. That's about all it really deserves, to be fair. You know, the Brandon Fraser movies are good. We spent about 30 seconds on the Tom Cruise mummy. We spent about half an hour of our 45-minute <laughs> episode on the Brendan Fraser movie. They're so good. Because it's perfect. Thank you. Scorpion King's okay, too. Haven't seen it. I, I'm not going to recommend it, but it's okay. <laughs> Tomb of the Dragon Emperor is good, too. I'm that guy. Fuck. Yes. It's awesome. It's real good. It's got Michelle Yeoh. It's great. <laughs> Sign me up. Jet Li is the mummy? Like, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay, sure, yeah. Ancient Chinese mummy shit. Okay. Terracotta Army? Okay. So that's it. That's Mr. Boogity from 1986, directed by Oz Scott. Hey, everybody, if you want some more bad movie goodness, you can check us out at moviedumpsterpodcast.com. Subscribe to us anywhere you get your podcasts, and make sure to leave us a five-star review if you dig the show, because it helps us get out of the bottom of the dumpster and into more eardrums. Yeah, and if you're on the social medias, you can follow us at Movie Dumpster on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor McGraw. I'm Matt Carrion. Thanks for visiting the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent Price? A boogity woogity. Was it too much? Boogity boogity boo? No, I like it. That was good. Boogity! Boogity! Hey, on. Isn't that a little chancy? I mean, this is Halloween. Isn't that when all the creepy things are supposed to stock the earth? It deals with demons. 
demon resurrection of those forces which roam the forest and dark bowers of man's domain. The first few pages warn that these enduring creatures may lie dormant but are never truly dead. It's Halloween, gentlemen. It's Halloween! Have you forgotten? They're coming to get you, Barbara. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare. Trick or treat.